All right, guys. Now, this was supposed to be brand new Ford 2023 Echo Boost cylinder head. That's what it was advertised as. Comes complete, loaded with valves, springs, retainers, locks, cams, buckets, you name it. Wasn't exactly cheap, but it wasn't ridiculously expensive. I have to be careful buying anything on the internet. Now, the this one is going back, and we're going to show you uh, a few reasons why it's going back, okay? Now, as far as I'm concerned, those valves look used, right? Definitely different colors and so forth, right? Okay. Head was milled. It looks pretty good. It's got a couple little little dings on it, but nothing that would cause a problem. That that really doesn't bother me. I would probably finish it anyway. But there's a couple telltale signs with uh, anything that's been on an engine. So let's take a look at that. Okay, guys, hard to get a, a focus on that, but. If I can get a focus, you can see there's witness marks around the head bolt holes. Absolutely has to be a used head if it has witness marks around the head bolt holes. It was installed on an engine at some point. It is not a new head. It is going back. Cams themselves look new. But if we can get a focus on the buckets, the buckets are used buckets. Now, I'll be honest, I would never do something like that on a cam and block engine, right? Never used, uh, used tappets ever, right? Now, can you get away with it on an overhead cam? Because the bucket's a good size. It's probably an inch in diameter. And it doesn't have nearly the the load on it that a cam and block has after it goes through the uh, rocker arm. Would it survive? I don't know. They look pretty pretty beat to me. And rusty. Um, definitely it's not, it's not new as it was advertised. Okay? So, a couple little things to uh, take a look at if you buy something that's supposed to be new and it's not. This is an important part, and I need your help because I have not been able to find definitive answer. I believe this is the right head. This has got a different, a different setup for the cams than the older models, I believe. I believe this is the right casting, but I am not 100% sure. I'm sure somebody that's going to watch this knows exactly which head this is. Remember, we need it for DVs. 2023 Echo Boost Mustang. Okay, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna do some poly quad action, a little bit different than the poly quad that you're used to seeing. Dave and I had a conversation. The other thing that I'm probably gonna need to do is I'm probably gonna need to buy a pilot to do uh, for these tiny stems on these valves. I don't I think I have a Sioux pilot that small. Let's take a couple looks at uh, how this head's designed and uh, what I think I'm going to do to improve it. Ugh, integral exhaust. Hate it. Very difficult to port. I've done some research on these. The water passages are like right under this. And just like sticking my finger in there, this has a huge boss. I think there's water under this boss where the bolt goes in. So, and this, this runner, right, that goes all the way over to here. So when I flip the head over, you'll be able to see how tight that is. I mean, this one isn't quite as bad because it goes, it goes to the center uh, four exhaust ports, I would think. Now, if you look at it from this angle, it doesn't look too terrible. It looks like it's relatively generous. But look at the, you know, 
Let's look at the angle they have to turn to get out. Now, is that as important on a turbo as it is on a naturally aspirated? It's a good question, and I'm going to say it. it's not... It won't hurt a turbo as much as it would hurt a naturally aspirated. That's my opinion, which means absolutely nothing. Okay, it looks like all four of these exhaust valves go up through the center. The center uh, exhaust port there. Uh, as far as the chambers, they look pretty good. Yeah, they're full of razor sharp edges, right? It's a direct injection engine, which is nice. You don't have to worry about texturing anything in the ports. Uh, the chambers themselves look pretty good. Uh, well, they don't have to cast an exhaust manifold for one. Okay. They're, they're taking all of this and probably putting it right through a cat. I don't know whether they're putting it through the cat before the turbo. I bet they are. It'd be interesting to figure that out. I'm sure it's, I can find that online somewhere. But, uh, oh, I just noticed this was dropped pretty good in one spot. Definitely was not me. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. I would probably just hit that area with a file or, or, or a grinder and it'd be good to go. As far as the chambers, they look pretty good, you know. Direct injection, which is nice. Small size spark plug. For the size of the bore, it's got decent sized valves. That doesn't mean we can't put oversized valves in them. DV did send me two packs of valves. Now, probably what he did is he sent me an oversized intake and an oversized exhaust so we could polyquad it. But I'm taking a look at the seats. I don't know how much more they can go, to be honest. They look like they're pretty tight. But then again, this was probably refinished. And they did, uh, you know, they just ground it. All right. Sorry if I repeat myself, guys, because the pause button got me again. Let's take a look at the intake side. I'm going to show this again because I don't know if, if this was before or after the pause button got me. But take a look at at this bulge inside the exhaust. I really believe there's water bolt in between that right there because I found one of these ported out and it had a hole right in that area. I don't think there's a lot you can do as far as porting these out. I might I might be able to get all the way through there. Let's see if we can get a light down there. Okay, I can't really get it in focus, but it's a pretty long runner and I am not 100% sure I'll be able to get to all of that doesn't matter. The exhaust isn't going to get more than probably some smoothing, to be honest. You want you want the ports to be relatively tight on a, on a turbo. Okay, we can get... Let's see if I can focus this. Okay, the two straight cylinders look like they're going to get the most work done. But there's, there's absolutely no way we're going to be able to get to everything on these. Okay, notice it's got a rounded divider between the two cylinders. There's always an argument whether it needs a sharp divider or a rounded divider. And since the exhaust is flowing out, I would vote for a sharp divider. Intake, intake manifolds I think of a little bit differently. I don't want to tell the airflow which direction to go. So I like rounded. But you will see sometimes when I balance an intake, it will have sharp edges on, on you know, a couple of those ports because I want to actually reduce the flow going to those and increase the flow to the ones that are starving. Overall, I mean, it's, it's not a horrendous design. I, mean, I despise the integral exhaust, but, you know, they don't have to make an exhaust manifold. They can put it right to the cat or right to the turbo. It's for packaging and, you know, cheap, really. I mean, if we calculate the area here, that's interesting, right? I'm sure somebody much smarter than me could calculate the area up on, on these, right? We've got two cylinders exhausting through this one, one cylinder and one cylinder. 
It'll be interesting when I get it on the bench. And I think I decided, because I don't have anything to open and close uh, four, four, you know, four valve per cylinder stuff, I have to get one with a cam. Disassemble the whole thing, put my light springs in there, and then actually use the cam to open and close the valves. It's uh, it's going to be a challenge. There's no question. I'm not I'm not a big fan of four valve stuff because it's tough to work on and it's so damn tiny. Okay, right down the intake ports. Right there, Siamese. Now I did see where uh, high boost application. They take this wall pretty much all the way out until they're divided, which probably does give you some more top end. It definitely gives you more volume. Notice the shape they are, right? They're, uh, it's not bad. It has a nice big radius, but they're rectangular. I would make them a little more round, okay? And even if I put my burr texture on it, it would be smoother than it is now. It's, uh, it's relatively rough. Okay, you can see the casting is relatively rough. Is that really hurting anything? No, but it's also not carrying fuel. So if you really wanted to, you could smooth that all out. You'll gain a few CFM. Is it really going to make a difference on a turbo? It's a good question. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. I don't think I am going to be polishing these. I think I'm going to be doing... Uh, the same texture I did on uh, a recent manifold I did for a friend. And I'm going to leave it at that, and I think that's going to work really well. Yeah, that made a huge difference just texturing the intake port before it went into the cylinder head. I could barely believe it. Huge step up, just changing texture. Okay, hopefully that pause button didn't get me again, because that was... A good segment. Now if we take a look, all of these are angled about the same, which is good. That's what we want to see. You don't want to see them all different like they did on the uh, Mustang GT manifolds where they have, you know, four good runners and four horrendous dogleg runners. They all come in at a bit of an angle, which is actually good. I mean, if you think about it, they're all coming in at this angle. Will that impart a small amount of swirl? I'm willing to bet these have a small amount of swirl completely stock. And when we polyquad it, we're going to improve that. Now, does that mean it's going to make more power? Another good question. Like Darren says, if you're using energy to swirl the mixture, that's energy you could be using to fill the cylinder. Well, guess what? we got a turbocharger filling the cylinder. We might be better off getting... Uh, getting the swirl to hit that fuel that's injected directly into it. It'll be a fun experiment. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait till, till we get the real head we can use. Uh, I wish I had the, the, the setup to take the valve springs off. Uh, if somebody knows an easy way to do that, you know, um, like I said, I'm not used to four valve per cylinder stuff. I've done a couple, but uh, not a lot. Okay, so the back of the cams are both the same, but the front of the cams are different, which I think I showed you the guys already before. It is a it is a Ford head. It says Fomoco on it. There is a number there. I don't know if I can read that. And. Uh, I don't have the, the casting number off the top of my head. In any case, 15 minutes and change looking at a head that's going back. Overall, I think we're going to make some nice power with this. Uh, I do not know how tough DV's bottom end is. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's got a forged crank and forged rods. Probably has forged pistons. But... Uh, He's got a good step up on it before he took the head off. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.